It is a hot, humid, sticky day out here in North Florida, and I'd much rather be inside in the air conditioning, but a few days ago, I cut the hay out here on Piney Grove, and I tetted it one time to spread it out to dry, and between the dew and I believe we've had one rain since I've cut it, it it's not ready to bale. We've got some blue clear skies now. We got lots of sunlight, lots of heat out here to dry it. But I just went out here and turned it over and the bottom side was wet. Also, this heat is not only affecting the hay, it's affecting our garden. We've got some good looking big watermelons. There's three right there. There's at least three more over there. And then the cantaloupes are over down there. And what that sun does with the rains we've been having is it ripens them super quick. So you, you pick one day and then skip a couple days and then you got a couple that are bursted open. We actually had a bursted open watermelon that we lost half of the watermelon, but the other half was real sweet and juicy. Well, let me show you this hay on the other side and then we'll jump on the Summit TX25 with the Ibex, Tedder, and Hay Rake and we'll get this stuff fluffed up and get it dried out so hopefully we can bale in a couple hours. This should be a, a good example. Now here on the top, it's dry. It's crispy, but it doesn't pull apart easy. Smells like hay. I think that's really, really good and ready to bale. But if you flip it over, it's wet on the bottom side. So we got to get that wet side dried out. And I think we should be able to do it. See, there's a little bit of greenery left too. But I think if we tet it one time, that'll turn it over. That'll expose it. I think it'll dry in a couple hours and we can get to baling it. You may be wondering why we only have a small section of our pasture out here that's cut. The reason is all this equipment is new. Last year we used similar equipment. When I say similar, there's three pieces of equipment that you need to cut hay. You need to cut it, you need to rake it, and you need to bale it. But all three pieces of those equipment are different from the equipment that Tractor Tools Direct provided to us this year to bale our hay. So we're using a drum mower this year. Last year we used a sickle mower. Uh, last year we used a wheel rake. This year we're using a PTO powered belt rake and the baler is very similar. So there's not a lot of learning curve there. But what we didn't want to get into was we didn't want to get into a situation where we had a bunch of rain coming and we had five or six acres to bale and we were frantically trying to learn the equipment and get, get it baled and trying to make a video. So we only cut a portion of the pasture so that we could get our processes down correctly and also be able to show you guys the process to do this. Where are you headed, woman? I, don't I doubt you could hear what Miss Piney Grove had to say, but she was walking our dog Bella a few minutes ago. And Bella's a bird dog. She's a Brittany Spaniel. And uh, she found a bat, I guess a baby bat on the ground. So Deb doesn't want anything to happen to the bat. So she took a plastic shovel so she can get the bat to safety and get it somewhere out of our property and onto a tree or something so that Bella doesn't get it. So the easy part of today is I've already got the belt rake on the summit because that's the way I left it a couple days ago after I tetted it the first time. This is the setup we'll be using today. We'll be using the Summit TX25 hydrostatic 25 horsepower tractor and the TX80 Ibex belt rake. And it's already set up. I didn't have to do anything because that's the way I left it last time. And we got three areas, all about this size to do. You can see that the brown hay is actually in the green grass that's growing up. So this is a fairly simple process. I'm just gonna go towards the camera, throw the hay that way, then turn around and throw it back. So you can see it's quick, it's easy, and where there was no hay, now there's a whole bunch of hay. And I think just since the time I've thrown it out here and tetted it, it's already started to dry and look better. There are some areas where it's still wet, but this sun is gonna dry it out quickly. And then we, we will put a, what's called a hay stop on that hay rake. And what that will do is instead of spreading the hay everywhere, far and wide like it did, it'll hit that hay stop and create a nice windrow that we can bale. Let me grab some of this and uh, just kind of feel it and smell it. I don't have a moisture meter. I can feel moisture in this piece right here. There's actually still some greenery in it. And I tetted it the best I could. I pushed it to one side and in places that it was clumpy, I tried to spread it back out. 
we had a lot of sun, now we're starting to get a lot of clouds. And it was really, really hot because the sun was, was beating down, but we do have a breeze. So I'm hopeful while I go to the next two sections and ted them, that this will be dry when I get back and I can put the actual windrowing attachment back on the belt rake. But this laid down in the field too long and it got rained on and I think I can salvage it. But like I mentioned in the beginning, this, this is a test to get our processes right. If I have to take all this hay and use it for erosion control or landscaping or something like that, I will. I'm not gonna risk moldy hay and give it to my neighbors for animals. We don't have animals yet. So like I said, we're, we're preparing and getting our processes down right so that when we do have animals and we do need to make hay, we know how to do it. We can do it quickly and efficiently and we're not learning then, we're learning now. But I'm gonna grab the tractor, go do those other two pots, and then we'll check in again and see if it's ready to be raked into windrows. I think I've done all I can do to the good here. I've gone to all three sections and tetted again. So every, all the hay has been touched twice if it hasn't been touched four times. And it's a lot drier. It's a lot drier than when we started this video. But as I was ripping around the pasture, I was actually able to use the Summit in high gear. It's a two-speed hydrostatic transmission. You can't do a lot in high gear because you lose a lot of that torque that you need, that pulling power. But I had no problem with that rake. That rake is just really easy to pull. I'm making a YouTube video about how to rake hay, but I don't totally know how to rake hay. So I'm learning as I go. And I think that's very beneficial, no matter what content creator out there that you watch, because when you get new equipment, nobody is an expert on it. Maybe you've used a belt hay rake before, but if it's not the same exact model, maybe it's gonna act a little different. Maybe you lower it down lower, keep it up higher, different speeds, whatever. And you're only gonna learn that through use. So as we talk through the process here, um, we may not be experts, but we're providing that on the spot knowledge. Well, that was a big old waste of diesel fuel. I felt the first raindrop hit and I was like, oh no, here it comes. And I just wasted all that time tedding that hay. I think I got lucky. We had a quick shower, but it wasn't a drencher at all. It's just kind of a sprinkle. And the sun came back out. It's been a couple hours since it rained. And I walked around and checked all the hay. It's dry to the touch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tet it one more time and then I'm going to put the hay stop on the rake and I'm gonna go ahead and windrow it and hopefully I'll get my baling done before nightfall. At this point, I've done all I can do to have successful or good quality hay. I've tetted it, I don't know. I've moved everything four times at least. And as I was doing that, I was thinking about it, thinking about my next move. My next move is to put on the hay stop and windrow it and get it ready to bale tonight. I can see now why the guy who custom baled our hay several years ago didn't want to come back. This is small acreage. Let's say all of this was done, all five or six acres were done and, and ready for hay. And let's say he had 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 acre plots, you know, all spread out across the county. And he ran into a little rain spell like, like we just did a few hours ago. He would have to ted all the hay, all that acreage. And by the time he got done tedding it so it would dry, he could get another rainstorm. And I see now why he didn't want to fool with small acreage like this. With Florida in the afternoon, in the summer, you have showers that come and go. And today has proven that you can work through a shower and still get hay done. But I just, you can't make any money if you're going back and forth 10 miles here, 10 miles there, transporting your equipment and trying to stay ahead. So haying independence, everybody having their own hay equipment it's essential because of the timing of hay. And I guess I never realized that. I never thought about it. It wasn't a big deal to me, but going forward, as we make more hay here on Piney Grove and get our animals, uh, those little windows of opportunity where you have two days or three days where there's no rain, you can get out here, you can make your hay, you can get enough for the winter and not have to depend on someone else and not have to worry about buying maybe some lower quality hay some hay that might be oversprayed, maybe has more pesticides or herbicides than you want in it. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm learning a lot and thinking a lot as, as I go across this pasture multiple times. And I think I've really done the best I can do. And I'm really happy that I have equipment so I control my own destiny with hay out here. But I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go get the hay stop and put that on and go ahead and windrow this hay. So this is really only the second time I've used the hay stop. I used it for just kind of to test it out the first time I used the rake. And I had the windrow too tight, so you can adjust this in and out how far away it is from the end of the rake. What you don't want to do is have too wide a windrow for your baler. It's a mini baler, so I think the pickup is 24 or 26 inches. So if you have a 36 inch wide windrow, then uh, your baler can only pick up, you know, 75% of it and you'll have to re-rake. But I've got the stop on and what I think is a good distance, it's easy to adjust, it's just a thumb wheel. I'm gonna tighten down the jam nut here and then uh, we'll get to windrow and hay. Let's rake. All right, now I'm just gonna run down this other side here and make that windrow a little taller and get lots of hay there. So that should be about one bale per windrow. I like it, that's a nice tight windrow. I think that looks pretty good. I'm not getting every bit of the hay, but I'm not worried about it. Stuff that's on the ground that's not fluffed up, it's probably better that it stays on the ground, but I think this is gonna make it real easy to bale with the way I got these windrows set up. I feel like I'm actually doing something. Not just running around wasting fuel. Since our grass isn't overly thick, I'm having to take and like consolidate a lot of hay. So I'm having to back up and go forward. And real thick grass, you would just you know, make some sort of serpentine pattern so that the baler is always in hay, but we just don't have that thick of grass on this first cutting. It's getting real thick because we fertilized, but that's just now starting to take effect. But that's looking real good. What's not looking real good are those clouds there. So I'm gonna finish windrowing this and then work on the other part. Well, we did it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's done, but we've petted and we've raked and we're ready to bail. And you can see all the windrows here. And I just talked to Miss Piney Grove. She brought me some water and she said, wow, it's way more hay than I thought. Because when we mowed it with the drum mower, the grass was a little short and it just didn't look like it was gonna yield a lot of hay. And I don't know how many bales are out here. Maybe it's only 10 or 20 of the little round bales, but it's more than we thought. PTO driven belt rake is so much better than the wheel rake. I, I was rushing that day that I baled hay last year, but when I, I took the rake down this way here, the rake would clog up because you had to make a real small passageway to make these real small windrows. And if you got into too much grass, it would bind up and you'd have to get back there by hand and, and pull it all out. And then you'd have to spread it out down the windrow. Maybe it's perfect for anything or any kind of baler, but it's perfect for these small areas. And the thing that I liked about it is I could take it and combine a couple windrows if say one windrow didn't have enough grass or enough hay in it. I didn't do it the most efficiently and the most efficiently would be you would have some sort of pattern where your baler would always be in hay. So I've actually got straight rows like if you're planting corn or something, but I just wanted to maximize the hay I had here, make sure everything was tedded and turned over and look for any wet grass. And so I did it this way. If we were doing this whole pasture, I would do more of what I just said as far as uh, some sort of pattern. And so it's like one big long snake throughout your whole property. But I gotta get to bailing. Unfortunately, that's not gonna be in this video. This video has gotten long. So we're gonna go ahead and close this one out. Be sure to stay tuned because whenever this one's posted, a few days later will be the bailing one. And hopefully that one's uneventful. And by uneventful, I mean, hopefully it's just me having fun with the Summit and the baler, and the Ibex baler, and spitting out bales of hay. But I have a feeling, like most things, it's gonna take, uh, there's gonna be a learning curve and there may be some, some struggles. 
but I've got good weather. The rain has gone that way. I've got nothing but sun above me. So I think I'm gonna be able to turn all this into bales of hay. So check out that video in a few days. But until next time, y'all take care out there and remember life's short, tractor hard.